Multiverses had an open beta that went down last year, and many fans, myself included, waited patiently for any bit of news to be given from the devs who were head down hard at work on the official release. The silence was finally broken on March 5th, and one week later the release date for the game was revealed to be May 28th. What all has been confirmed since? I've scoured social media, the official Discord, the YouTube, and more to find everything I could to get my hands on, so let's talk about it. The biggest announcement was the Joker as a playable character, which was shown after the community completed 10 different tasks to open up the mystery box on the official Discord. Mark Hamill reprises his role one last time alongside the late Kevin Conroy. Joker got the full welcome wagon with his reveal. The mage got two additional costumes shown off including the Marini design as well as the Batman Who Laughs which even comes with different voice lines. He even got his own fighter moveset video which contains his dash attack I'm the Joker, baby. as well as the grounded up normal that just happens to be a random crowbar. Yep no reference here huh? Up next we got someone the whole community thought was a red herring but actually became true. Banana Guard was revealed after sending random bananas to various content creators upgrading from an item in the beta to a full fully fledged playable character in the official release. The Adventure Time rip also comes with a female variant as an additional costume. Now it's time to talk about how I believe we are getting at least two more fighters reveals before launch. First off comes the Powerpuff Girls. The first teaser being shown in the Joker trailer, the girls data is shown alongside many other playable characters in the Batcave, as well as the Buckle Up Buttercup hint in the Q&A Discord a couple weeks ago. Buttercup obviously being one of the girls. It's unclear if there'll be all three as one character or just one of them specifically, as only time will tell. Notice how I said two characters by the way. The next fighter was also hinted at on social media, which is probably going to be revealed within the next week. It could potentially be at Combo Breaker, one of the biggest FGC events to happen annually in Chicago, as many key Warner Brothers and Player First Games employees will be in attendance. This could just be the Powerpuff Girls, or another character altogether. In the Rivs video, the character select screen is ordered alphabetically with two secret slots. One being Banana Guard, which falls between Arya and Batman, and the other being between Jake and Joker, which means this character's name starts with a J. Something in my gut tells me this is the next character to be revealed, so we'll have to wait and see. Let's talk about costumes, as so many new ones have been shown. Looks like the summer event is going to start things off for season one, as we have beach costumes ready for Wonder Woman, Harley Quinn, Arya, and Superman, as well as LeBron James wearing a hoodie and joggers. On top of this, Harley Quinn got a second additional outfit, the Harley Quinn Zell outfit, which references her psychologist days. Last but not least, Garnet was shown in her wedding costume, a key moment in the Steven Universe show. Two stages were also shown, both with complete soundtracks to listen to, Dexter's Laboratory and the City of Townsville. It's been referenced that Mojo Jojo will appear potentially as a stage hazard on Townsville. And we got a glimpse of a Robo Dexo boss fight on Dexter's Laboratory. Speaking of boss fights, a whole video talking about the new PvE Rifts mode was uploaded, which will also include boss fights. I absolutely adored this video as the charm of the characters interacting with each other shined through. We first knew about this PvE mode in the Road to Launch video, but now we can sink our teeth into it. The PvE mode includes multiple campaigns or rifts for the players to choose, including tutorial rifts, special rifts, and more. Nodes within those rifts are challenges that can range from simple battles against AI to platforming auto-scroller levels. They showed off wacky effects like Taz's tasty effect being on every move, minigames galore, and boss fights. The highlight here is the two-player co-op mode, which sets one player as the leader and one as the buddy. A little unclear about the difference, but it looks like the run ends only if the leader is knocked out. Regardless, they can both unlock rewards and gems for completion, gems being upgraded to help with future nodes. Last but not least, the gameplay engine itself got rebuilt in Unreal Engine 5 instead of the beta's Unreal Engine 4. Not only did they rebuild the game from the ground up, the netcode was also rebuilt using a tailor-made rollback version specifically for multiverses that will allow smoother, more reliable online play. The old netcode didn't support what PFG wanted to accomplish. Matchmaking used to almost always be determined by late but now the new net play will allow for more seamless play with friends and foes who are farther away. The combat itself was updated to bring more clarity, such as using bigger models. A parry system was introduced, which allows you to get a punish on someone, including long range attacks, which will drag the foe closer to guarantee a punish. It can also break armor on opponents, destroy projectiles, and you can even equip perks to influence it, such as clear the air, which will allow parries to reflect projectiles instead. Speaking of perks, they've been upgraded completely as well, and every character will always have access to at least one full set of perks regardless of character level. Other stuff in combat includes new dash attacks, reworked character kits, blast zone adjustments, and more. That's it for now. I'll probably make another video soon to cover more stuff as they get announced or shown off. My name's Asti La Vista, and I can't wait to see the community again on May 28th.